Greetings. It's Thursday, the 23rd of October. I wanted to do a quick update on the, uh, the design uh, after receiving the input from Eric DeJong. On the hull, I have, of course, reworked the hull. I showed you guys that last week and has, have made the boat longer. It's now 54 foot instead of 50 foot 7 inches. Uh, and so I've been able to do some rework to the interior, which I'm really kind of happy about. So let's show you what's going on. All right, so before we get to the interior layout, I guess I want to show you a little bit about the hull design. All right, so this is the hull here. These are hull lines, and so you can see a little better. Um, this is the exterior of the hull right here, right? And, of course, this angle has been made smaller due to extending the bow by the additional three feet five inches I've been able to cut down the angle of entry of the bow but what is really good here is that I've really been able to cut down on the bow once you kind of and forgive me but this camera is not picking up too well what I have here are the different um, lines that represent different things in the hull so this is the top of the hull right? This line here represents the, the first chine, the high chine of the boat. This represents the lower chine of the boat. And what this shows now is exactly how acute that angle of entry is uh, at the water line, you know, where the water actually hits the boat. So as you see here, the angle of entry, I think we said it was like 38 degrees or something like that. But down here, it's really, really acute uh, as this actually then fades or merges into this dimension here and this uh, is the upper chine um, which then the shear begins to uh, well no actually the hull the hull the bottom of the boat starts here this is the chine that comes up to this angle and uh, then rises on the shear and so what this really shows is exactly how this boat is going to deflect the water you know as it makes the entry as the bow enters you know where the water is going and what it's doing and I'm real happy with that um, if I can show you here on the elevation this is the upper chine I was talking to you about this is the lower chine at the water line so basically the boat should sit on this line and as the water you know if you're in rough seas as water hits as you can see this line here pushes water down and then even further under the bow. So I'm real happy about that, about how that worked out. And these are uh, the hull lines from looking forward. These are the actual frames, or at this point here, I guess they're still frames, but these are bulkheads. Uh, I think we don't get until frames until maybe frame five or six, where it's actually going to be a framed piece of lumber here. But again, as you see, as the, the bow cuts through the water, that water is pushed down. And now that that angle has been really decreased, I think we're going to have pretty good windward performance. Again, I'm rushing through this um, to kind of uh, explain some pretty technical things um, in a very uh, short time frame here. But again, this is the uh, low chine. This is the upper chine, and as you see, the water comes in, or the bow enters very acute, and will shed and push that water down and back. So, I mean, it was similar in the first design, but I actually raised up the bow, or actually raised this initial chine here. Initially, it was straight, um, which, of course, when you had the more um, wide angle, you know, eh, it was sufficient, but raising this up here allows for, uh, I guess, as, you know, water may be rougher, or as, you know, if you're pounding through waves, the water will actually hit the bow higher, and raising this chine up helps to deflect that water, which should allow for, you know, faster, smoother windward passage. And I guess let me show you what we've done on the inside of the boat 
And we'll start here at the mast. The mast initially sat like right at this location. And so since it sat there, it kind of made, you know, this little settee a little awkward because I wasn't sure if what I was going to put between the mast and this bulkhead. But since the boat's gotten bigger, the mast has moved forward to this uh, watertight bulkhead here, which then allowed a little reworking of the settee, which made this seat here move over a little bit. I think I'm going to put some type of built-in um, cabinet there, which will allow for a handhold, which is good um, when underway, even though there is a handhold above it. If you, you can't really see it on this drawing, I apologize. Um, but there's a dashed line here, which represents a cabinet that is actually on the ceiling, which will have a handhold on it. But of course, having one lower works well. Uh, here, the settee has, uh, as I said, it's gotten a little bit larger here, which gave me a little bit of an angle to add to the settee for, you know, not really a full seat, but it just makes it a little bit bigger. Uh, again, this settee will convert into a berth, so the table lowers, cushions fill in, and you've got a nice berth there. Uh, not a, quite a midship, but a pretty good berth while you're underway. Uh, the galley really didn't change, even though Andy Shell gave me an idea uh, that's going to be pretty easy to implement. He wondered about this dimension here is a little bit more than two feet, which is not very large, but this dimension here widens by about a foot. So when you're underway and you're healing over and you're trying to work at the sink or trying to work here at the stove, um, you know, maybe a bit, bit wide if you're uh, underway. If you could possibly put a roll bar, <laughs> something that would stick into the floor that you could take up and you know I studied it figured out how I could do it and it simply would almost be like a um uh how can I explain it almost like um it will be a roll bar a metal bar that comes up out of the out of the floor or the sole comes over and goes back down that'll simply be in maybe an inch a uh, little cavity that could be made out of, of stainless steel that will sink into the sole about two inches that I'll just stick in, that'll probably have a point here and a point here, and then when I wanted to work on the stove, I'll take it up and put it here and here, and then it would store right here, you know, either uh, with some kind of snapping mechanism to snap in here, or I don't know if, sure if this cabinet will lift up and I can put it in, but it works out pretty easily uh, to be able to do that, so thank you, Andy, for that suggestion. Now, let's see, coming back... Um, as the aft cabin got a little bit wider because I added another foot to the to the to the um, transom of the boat, uh, didn't do much here. Just made these doors uh, sliding doors. This is a hanging locker. This is a shelf locker. That hanging locker stayed the same. I made the technical room. The technical room got a little bit bigger um, because, as I said, the boat got wider aft, and I sort of reworked the heads, the the aft heads, instead of uh, the toilet initially was over here. The sink was a little bit more forward. I've put the toilet on this side. Um, one, because when you're healing, if the toilet is closer to the center, you know, it kind of lessens the impact of being on a on a heel, even though I have a toilet on each tack. This toilet um, is on the port side and the forward head is, is on the starboard side. So, you could technically use either head. But either way, I wanted to put this toilet to center because it's just for, for ease of use. And initially, I didn't do that because there is a bulkhead that comes along here, which is the pilot house, which lowers the ceiling height right around here to around five foot five. And of course, you know, I had to go actually look at the head or, or, or toilet and see if you could sit comfortably <laughs> under a five foot five uh, bulkhead. And you, and you can, and it's only about. Uh, 12 to 14 inches and it's sort of right here so that'll work out pretty actually it's about right here so it's just a little bit uh, by the head and then I've decided I can put some type of accordion door that will just go across here and then uh, a little curtain that will go here to enclose the wet space if I needed to at all you know I don't think there's going to be any real wood surface in that head so um, you know with the floor drain to a sump you know, you shut the door, shut the door, and you could just, you know, really use the entire shower. And, of course, there'll be some type of bench or something that folds down uh, here. So, reworked the head a little bit. Actually, took a little corner out of the engine room to make 
this door a little different here because the the V that allowed access to the technical room and the head, the V was a little bit larger. Um, so by moving this over a little bit and changing the angle here, I was able to get more room inside of the technical space, which is good because we want to be a cruising sailboat and have plenty of space for all of the gear, spare parts, and items we'll need to um, voyage reliably uh, wherever we want to go. So I did some reworking to the forward cabin, not really a, of impact of the uh, bow change, but I just thought about some things. And initially there was a hallway here and the door to the cabin was here. I decided just to make this bulkhead here a uh, waterproof bulkhead, a watertight bulkhead where when this door is closed there could be a gasket there. And I've seen the mechanism uh, pretty easily to make that um, watertight with the door, which means that this bulkhead now has to go from ceiling to to um, to the actual hull of the boat and be sealed and fiberglassed in, and all of the plumbing and pipes going through also sealed, which is very very possible and uh, not difficult at all. So not much change here. I reworked the closet initially, which was more along the lines of right across here and the door was facing forward so you had to walk around and open the door to gain entrance into the closet I figured it could be made more efficient by having the door open into the sort of space here this would be a shelf locker here and as you see I kinda got this little area here that I'm thinking I'm going to just put a little bench a little cushion bench to sit on um, uh, not really sure, but that seems like it's always a good idea to have a place to sit other than the bed. And, of course, able to keep my king, which is a California king. And I think I'm going to call this space, which used to be called the sail locker, I think I'm going to call it the forward technical room. Because this is really uh, a much larger area now. It's one, two, three, three and a half frames. So that's about seven feet almost. About seven foot wide in the front of the bow so I could keep a lot more <laughs> than sails in that area uh, all types of equipment and of course this forward peak here is still the chain locker and I've got some great ideas on how to work the windlass um, and the bow roller so that it doesn't uh, encroach on the 55 foot um, maximum size I need to have for the marina I'm looking at so that is a quick and rushed uh, overview of the changes that we've made. I'm very excited about it. Uh, there's lots more technical information I wish I could share, but um, I need to figure out how to record the um, on-screen stuff so that it's a little bit more clear. And so if you have any suggestions on how to do that, how to capture the screen and add audio overlay, I would greatly appreciate that. I use... Um, uh, what is this product? I know it's a good one for what I've put the videos. I have Adobe Premiere, which I'm sure does everything. I'm just not sure how to use it. So if you have information on that or suggestions on how I could make these videos better in terms of showing you some of the technical on-screen stuff, at the same time being able to provide commentary, um, I would greatly appreciate it. I do have another camera that I could use to record but again, um, that's not my area of expertise. So until next time, peace and blessings.